One morning, Miffy heard a strange scratching at her front door. What could that be? She wondered. She opened the door and there was a friendly little brown dog. The little dog wagged its tail happily. What's your name, little dog? asked Miffy. But the dog only went... <coughs> Miffy laughed and said, I think your name is Snuffy. Shall I give you some water? It's hot today. You must be very thirsty. <coughs> Miffy went into the kitchen. She filled a bowl with cold water. Snuffy happily drank the water. Miffy asked her, Would you like to play with me in our garden? Miffy led Snuffy to the garden. Show me what you can do. Can you sit? Snuffy sat. Can you sit up and beg? Snuffy sat up. Can you roll over? Snuffy rolled over. What else can you do? Suddenly, Snuffy pricked up her ears and started running around the house. What's the matter? asked Miffy. Is there something wrong? Snuffy stopped at the kitchen window and started to bark. <coughs> Miffy ran up to the window and looked in to see what was the matter. She saw that she had forgotten to turn off the water at the kitchen sink and it was still running. What a clever dog you are, Snuffy, said Miffy. When I went to the kitchen to get water for you to drink, I forgot to turn off the tap. Miffy went quickly into the house. She turned off the water. Oh, Snuffy, said Miffy. You are such a clever little dog. Now you must be very hungry. I'll give you a biscuit. <coughs> said Snuffy happily. <coughs> Her little tail was wagging with joy. It was so nice that you came to visit me. You can come to see me any time you like. <coughs> Snuffy barked happily. Which meant, yes, I will. It was a beautiful morning and Miffy thought, this is a perfect day to visit my Auntie Alice. Miffy asked her mother if she could go to Auntie Alice's house. If you go, you should bring Auntie Alice a nice present, said Mother Bunny. Miffy thought, what kind of present can I bring my auntie? Miffy looked out of her window and saw beautiful flowers growing in her garden. Can I pick some flowers from the garden to give to Auntie Alice? asked Miffy. Yes, of course, said her mother. Mm -hmm. 
Miffy picked a lovely blue flower. Then a yellow flower. And a red flower. These flowers make a beautiful present, thought Miffy. I'm sure Auntie Alice will be pleased with these. Miffy was walking down the path on her way to visit her Auntie Alice when she passed Poppy Pig's house. Hello, Miffy. What are you carrying? I'm taking some flowers to my Auntie Alice, answered Miffy. Oh dear, cried Poppy. Are you hurt? I'm okay, cried Miffy, but my flowers are ruined. I can't visit Auntie Alice without taking her a present. Don't be sad, Miffy, said Poppy. I will give you a big bunch of fresh carrots from my garden. Your auntie will love them. Oh, that's very kind of you, Poppy. You're my friend, Miffy, said Poppy. And friends always help each other. So Poppy led Miffy to her garden and pulled out lots of fresh carrots and put them in a basket for Miffy to carry. Miffy thanked Poppy Pig. Poppy was a good friend. When Miffy arrived at Auntie Alice's house, she gave her auntie the fresh carrots. Her aunt was very pleased. Miffy told Auntie Alice how Poppy had helped her. Miffy Auntie Alice told her. You're lucky to have such a good friend. No one can be happy without friends. No one can be happy without fresh biscuits either, said Auntie Alice, as she put a plateful of warm biscuits before Miffy. They had come fresh from the oven. Mmm, thought Miffy. My auntie is a good friend too. Miffy has a special calendar in her room. It has a mark for each of her family and friends' birthdays. She doesn't want to forget a single one. There is a mark for Boris Bear's birthday. And for Barbara Bear's birthday. There is a mark for Poppy Pig's birthday. There is a mark for her mother's birthday and a mark for her father's birthday. And look, there is even a mark for Snuffy's birthday. And it is today. It's a good thing I have my calendar marked, said Miffy. It would be terrible if I forgot a dear friend's birthday. But what can I give to Snuffy for her birthday? Can a little dog eat ice cream and cake? I don't think so. So Miffy went to her mother for help. Mother, today is Snuffy's birthday, she said. What shall I give her? Well, said Miffy's mother, dogs love to play with toys. Why don't you give Snuffy one of your old toys? You have so many. So Miffy went to her room and looked at all her wonderful toys.
Miffy thought, I love all of my nice toys, but I also love Snuffy. What shall I do? Maybe I should make something, especially for Snuffy. She went to her mother and asked, What can I make for Snuffy? I have a pretty bowl, said Mother Bunny. You can paint Snuffy's picture on it and it will be a wonderful bowl for her water. Mother Bunny looked under the kitchen sink and there it was. What a good idea, said Miffy. I will use my paint box to make it beautiful and I will paint Snuffy's picture on it. Soon it was finished and it was beautiful. Miffy ran outside and called. Snuffy! Snuffy! Happy birthday! Come and get your present! She shouted. When Snuffy saw the beautiful little bowl with her picture on it, she wagged her tail and jumped for joy. She was so happy to have such a lovely birthday present. Miffy was happy too because she painted the bowl all by herself. She took a watering can and filled the bowl with fresh water. Snuffy drank the water from her new bowl and had a very happy birthday. Miffy's Auntie Alice was a dancer when she was young. She still loved to dance and she decided to give dancing lessons to Miffy and her friends. On Saturday morning, Miffy, Winnie, Melanie and Aggie went to Auntie Alice's house on the hill for their dancing lessons. First, of course, Auntie Alice gave them each some of her delicious biscuits and cocoa. Then, dressed in their dancing outfits, they were ready to start. Dancing looks easy, said Auntie Alice. But it really is hard work. You must work hard to learn the proper dance steps. First, I will show you what to do. Now, you girls try it together. It was so difficult. But when Auntie Alice played the rhythm on the piano, they finally got it right. Good! Now I'll show you how to twirl round without losing your balance. You will feel sore sometimes, said Auntie Alice. But when you become real dancers, you will feel happy. Every Saturday, up and down and round they went. They jumped and turned and posed. Always keeping in time with the piano. It was hard work, but it was great fun. 
Miffy tried to move and stand gracefully. It made her feel good about herself. She wondered if Boris Bear could be a dancer, and she asked Auntie Alice. Is dancing only for girls? Goodness me, said Auntie Alice. Dancing is for everyone. Some of the greatest dancers are boys. Dancing gives them strength and good balance. I should ask Boris and Barbara Bear to join our dancing class, said Miffy. Yes, said Auntie Alice. If we have a larger group, you can perform dances for your parents. They will enjoy seeing how good you have become. The girl bunnies all worked very hard. Miffy wondered, would Boris really like to be a dancer? On her next visit to Boris Bear's house, Miffy was surprised to discover that Boris was a dancer. One morning, Miffy received a postcard from her good friend Boris Bear. Boris lived in a wooden house he had built all by himself. It was right in the middle of the forest. The postcard showed a beautiful picture of his house. On the other side, Boris wrote, Dear Miffy, please come and visit me. I would like you to help me pick blueberries. The forest is full of blueberries at this time of year. Miffy thought that would be a fun thing to do. So she asked Mother Bunny if she could visit Boris and pick some blueberries. Yes, but you must be very careful. Stay on the forest path so you won't get lost. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I know the way. Her mother said, I'll pack a basket of sandwiches so you and Boris can have a nice picnic to go with the blueberries you pick. Be careful, Miffy's mother said again as she waved goodbye to Miffy. Miffy walked into the forest. She heard birds singing. She smelt lovely flowers. She saw many colourful butterflies flitting this way and that. The forest was full of wonderful things to see, smell and hear. She looked to the right. She looked to the left. She looked up. She looked all around. Suddenly, she looked straight ahead and there was Boris's house. Boris came out to greet her. Hello, Miffy. I'm so happy you could come. There are so many delicious blueberries to pick in the forest. They picked and picked. Soon their baskets were full of fresh ripe blueberries and their stomachs were also full of fresh ripe blueberries and sandwiches too. They had a wonderful time. Soon it began to get a little dark. Oh, said Miffy, it's time for me to go home. Do you think you can find your way? asked Boris. He was a little worried that Miffy might get lost. Don't worry, Boris. I know the way, said Miffy. And she started to walk home with her basket full of blueberries. But it started to get darker and darker. Miffy looked to the left. She looked to the right. But all of the trees looked the same. I'm afraid I am lost after all, said Miffy. No, said Boris. You're not lost. 
I shall show you the way out. Miffy was pleased to see that Boris had been following her on her way home. He walked with her all the way to the edge of the forest. Here we are, said Boris. There is your little house. Now you can find your way home by yourself. Miffy waved goodbye to Boris and she thought, I'm so glad to have such a good friend. Miffy, Miffy, we love you. You always know just what to do.